rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles. If you can't speak to me or out and give a defense for your beliefs, are you obe obeying Nathaniel and Ithan, or are you obeying Jesus Christ? Can I show you a verse that shows you're not obeying Jesus Christ by not giving an answer? I'll show you right here. It's in 1 Peter. So we turn to 1 Peter, who was an apostle, and we look at 1 Peter 3.15, and you know what he says? How y'all doing? We are standing in front of the headquarters for IUIC Dallas. And they're in the background. This is their Sabbath. Today's Saturday. So uh, the men are getting ready to go out to the street to street preach. And actually there's children over there who are going to learn today about the theology of IUIC, which is bad theology. So I want to show one key Bible passage that... Um, proponents of Hebrew Israelism of the one of variety cannot answer. This this Bible passage really destroys uh, their whole eschatology. Eschatology is your theology of end time events. And I want to show this from Acts. So if you have your Bibles, if you could turn please to Acts chapter 26. Let me give you a little bit of the context here while you're turning there. And explain what's going on in Acts chapter 26. The Apostle Paul had been getting in trouble. And right now he's in front of Agrippa. And any of you who look this up on a number of Bible or historical sources and find out. Who is this person named Agrippa that Paul has to give his defense before? Agrippa is in the family of Herod. Who's Herod? Herod is is described in the Bible as being from Edomia, meaning under one West understanding, he would be what they would call an Edomite. Now, an Edomite is a descendant of an ancient uh, group of people descended from Esau who lived in the church area of Israel. And down there, you have the Moabites, you have the Edomites, and you have the Ammonites. You have all three of those people groups. So supposedly, right under Israel, you have a group of white people, Asian people, and Japanese people. But it's unlikely that white people would actually be Edomites because we see that you didn't have those kind of people living in that area. So let me show you something here that's important. First you gotta understand a little bit about the IUIC, the group behind me, what they teach. They teach that white people were Edomites and in the end times, remember I mentioned eschatology, white people were Edomites in bondage to Israelites, which they believe they're the only true Israelites. But they also believe Moabites, who they say are Chinese, and Japanese, who are Ammonites, all these groups of people will be in bondage to them, literally in chains. Now, the question is, is that idea apostolic? So he's just giving all this testimony down in Acts 26 all the way to verse 11. Now he gives his actual conversion starting in verse 12 and speaks about an encounter he has with the risen Jesus. Now here's where I want to start showing you where it gets really good and where it's going to deconstruct the Hebrew Israelites, specifically IUIC, the Israel United in Christ, type of understanding about other peoples. So then, this is verse 19, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Instead, I preached to those in Damascus first, and to those in Jerusalem and in all the region of Judea, and to the Gentiles. So we're in Acts 26, 20. Hebrew Israelites teach that Gentiles are heathen nations and have no chance of being saved. They cannot be redeemed. They're a, literally a non-elect people group. All of them. They believe there's, I think, 18 Gentile nations. They have a table of nations. Breakdown they do. And they would say that Gentiles can't be saved. So guess what they do? They say, oh, these Gentiles here, that Paul speaks of are actually scattered Israelites in a Gentile state of mind. But that's not what the text says. It doesn't say that. 
it says Gentiles. And in fact, if you go back to verse 17, Paul says that Jesus said to him, I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles. So verse 17 is important because Jesus right here is saying, I will rescue you from your people and from the Gentiles. I don't know if you can hear the group in the background doing their chants. So what's the point of that? Jesus himself differentiates Paul's people who are the Jews or the Israelites from the Gentiles. I will rescue from your people and from the Gentiles. Two different people groups. So it's not going to change now, right? When we go down to verse 20 and Paul says this, I preach to those in Damascus first and to those in Jerusalem and in all the region of Judea and to the Gentiles. Same understanding. There's your people, there's Gentiles. Paul is preaching to them. He thinks they can be converted. He thinks there are elect people who will be God, become God's people among the Gentiles. So he has a different understanding of soteriology. He has a different missiology than do Hebrew Israelites. When these guys go out later today and they stand on the corners of downtown Dallas, these guys are going to say this message is only for our fellow Israelites. Now continue on verse 21. For this reason, the Jews seized me in the temple and were trying to kill me. To this very day, I have, help, I have had help from God, and I stand and testify to both small and great, saying nothing, nothing other than what the prophets and Moses said would take place. What Paul's saying is that his mission among Jews and Gentiles is something that was predicted in the pages of the Old Testament, which you can find. Verse 23, that the Messiah must suffer, and that... As the first to rise from the dead, he would proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. So notice, going back to verse 17, using Jesus' words as the understanding. It says, I will rescue you. I will rescue you from your people. So who are Paul's people? The Israelites, the Jews. And from the Gentiles. Two different people groups. Your people. Because these can't be scattered Israelites in a Gentile state of mind because that would qualify as Paul's people, your people and from the Gentiles. And notice the parallel. He would proclaim light to our people and to the Gentiles. So we want to interpret these passages in context. We don't want to reinterpret the phrase Gentile because it suits our religion and allows us to other people and exclude people that we don't like from salvation. That's something that God didn't do. And that's something that we, if we say we're disciples of Christ, should not do as well. And again, we haven't even got to the best verse yet. Agrippa, do you believe the prophets? I know you believe. Agrippa said to Paul, again, remember, Agrippa is a descendant of Herod. Herod is of Edomia, which is the Greek way to say Edomite, whom they believe are a non-elect people. They think it's white people, regardless of what people group they think it is, which is most certainly not white people. The point is they think it's a non-elect ethnicity. But listen to this. Remember, Agrippa is of Edomia. Agrippa said to Paul, Are you going to persuade me to become a Christian so easily? So he's saying to Paul, Are you about to convince me to be a Christian? Now everyone needs to see this. I wish before God. So how does Paul respond to Agrippa's thing? His question, which says, Are you going to persuade me to be a Christian? I wish before God, meaning I pray to God that that would be the case. That's what he's saying. I wish before God, replied Paul. So Paul just told someone who is, is of Adumia, whom they would say is an Edomite, who they would say is non savable He just said, I wish before God that you would become a Christian, replied Paul. But he doesn't stop there. So look at this. That whether easily or with difficulty, not only you, but all who listen to me today might become as I am, except for these chains. So notice this. Here Paul says... I want you to become a Christian and all who listen to me. This is important. Zoom in on that. All who listen to me today. Here's a question I asked the Hebrew Israelites last night on the street because we spoke to GMS Dallas. And here's something I need to say about GMS and IUIC. They're both one West camps, which means a certain school of Hebrew Israelism. GMS believes a lot of similar things to IUIC because they're both descended out of one West. GMS, though, puts their beliefs more front and center. They're not afraid to say what they believe as much. IUIC is a lot more image conscious, so they're not as out front with some of their beliefs, but they both believe Edomites will be in chains. But yet, Agrippa, who is an Edomite, hears this from Paul. Let me repeat it again, nice and slow, so everybody can understand. 
whether easily or with difficulty, Paul speaking to a group here, not only you, but all who listen to me today, means everybody in the room, most certainly everybody there was not Jews, might become as I am. What did Agrippa say Paul was? A Christian. Read the prior verse. Except for these chains. Paul saying, I would like you to become a Christian, Agrippa. In fact, I pray it to God himself that you would become a Christian. Except for one thing, Agrippa. I don't want you to be in these chains like I am. Now, Hebrew Israelites, IUIC, who's about to teach their children horrible doctrines about people who look different than them, going into slavery in the kingdom, that, that they're going to have Edomite, Ishmaelite, Ammonite, Moabite slaves. That's what they teach them. That they'll be in chains. Why did Paul say to an Edomite, I want you to become a Christian, but I don't want you to be in chains? He literally said the very opposite of what One West eschatology is. Now, when I presented this to GMS on the street last night in Dallas, you know what they said? They said Paul was being subtle there. He was he was moving with guile. They were basically accusing Paul of lying. They said, you know how when the police come and all of a sudden you start saying, sir, and stuff like that? This is what they said last night. They said Paul was just doing the same thing. So let's just stop and look at that defense. Before any of you guys make a response video and utilize that kind of defense, here's what I want you to understand. You, in order preserve, to preserve your bad theology, which says people who don't look like you will be in chains in the kingdom, you're willing to call Paul a liar. The question is this. Could you say to someone you think is an Edomite, could you say, I want you to become a Christian, except I don't want you to have chains on? Could you say either one of those two things? Now, here's the question. If you can't, why not? It seems like you're listening to Aria, One West, and specifically with IUIC, Nathaniel, and the deacons and elders of the Israel United in Christ School. It seems like you're listening to them instead of listening to the pages of Scripture. We see Acts 26, 29, we see a verse that single-handedly dismantles, defeats, discombobulates, deconstructs, demolishes, and destroys the eschatology of one less Hebrew Israelism, except for these chains. Why did Paul say, except for these chains? And that's a question that I hope these men behind me answer with all sincerity and honesty. Acts 26. That's the passage I was looking at in front of your school. I'd much rather engage you. Of course, I wouldn't come up when the children are there. I wouldn't do that. But I would talk to the men. And the verse would be this. I could ask you what I just asked the camera. It's Acts 26, verse 29. Do you guys remember when Paul was standing before Agrippa? And remember, he was on trial before Agrippa. Now, do you guys know who Agrippa's descendants or his ancestors were? Do you know who Agrippa's ancestors were? We just listen. We just okay, listen. okay. Agrippa's ancestors were of Adumia. And you know what it means in Greek, somebody's ancestors were from Adumia, right? It means under the old language, they were Edomites. Now, you guys have a 12 tribes chart that you've inherited from Bivens and Ariyah. And on that 12 tribes chart, you have nations that you think are Israel. Then you have another thing called the 18 Nations Breakdown, which is right on the IUIC website, Israel Night. And on there, you have nations you believe are essentially non-elect nations. These are ethnic groups of people who cannot be saved. Now, you guys believe that the Edomites are one of the group nations or groups of people that cannot be saved, right? And in fact, you teach that in the kingdom, they'll be your servants, they'll be your slaves. Here's the question, though. Does Paul agree with your belief? If he doesn't, you've got to ask yourself, why aren't my beliefs apostolic? So let me just read you these, this key part right here. Acts 26, verse 28. Agrippa, who's an Edomite, said to Paul, are you going to persuade me to become a Christian so easily? That's what he says to him. And now look what Paul says. I wish before God, replied Paul, that whether easily or with difficulty, not only you, so that's an affirmative. Does it say in the military? That's an affirmative. He said, do you want me to become a Christian? Paul says, I wish before God, that's a way to say, I pray to God about this. 
So that's that's an affirmative. Then he double affirmatives, makes a double a double affirmative when he says this, whether whether easily or with difficulty, not only you, but all who listen to me today might become as I am. Now here's what's so crazy about that. If he just said you, you might be able to okay find some way out of it. Maybe I don't I still don't think you could because the grip is clearly of a dumia. But he says all who hear me today. Now. You gentlemen know that everybody in that room with Agrippa, especially consider we know Festus is in the room. Those are not all Jews. Those, those are not all Israelites. Those are not Hebrew men and women. Why does he say, I would have you all to become a Christian like I am? And here's the kicker. Not only you, but all who listen to me today might become as I am, except for these chains. So here's the question. If you believe the Edomites, of whom Agrippa was one of, are going to be your servants in the kingdom for all eternity, or actually for the thousand years until they get vanquished, if you think they're going to be your servants and in chains, why did Paul say he prays to God that Agrippa won't be in chains? You have to answer that question. Because it looks to me like we have one verse, and there's a lot more verses we could go to, but we got one verse right here that single-handedly deconstructs Hebrew Israelism. It single-handedly destroys your soteriology. It single-handedly discombobulates your eschatology. It single-handedly does away with it. So the question is, when you guys go out and you're downtown, you're around Maine or wherever you want to stand in Dallas, when you see someone you perceive to be an Edomite, even though you're certainly, certainly mistaken about their identity, when you see them, will you say, hey, you of Edomia, just like Paul said to Agrippa, I wish before God you could become just like me, except don't have chains on. Because you believe you're still in your captivity. And so you could say to them, I wish you could be up just like I am right now, except I pray before God that you won't be in captivity. Could you men say that? If the question is, if the answer to that question is no, my question would be, why? Why can't you say that? Why wouldn't you be able to say to the one you think is an Edomite, I would like you to be like me except for these chains? Why not? Any of you guys have answers? I have a question. Who are you obeying right now? What I mean by that is this. If you can't speak with me, and I'm asking you to give a defense for your beliefs. If you can't speak to me or out and give a defense for your beliefs, are you obey obeying Nathaniel and Ithan? Yeah, what's up? Or are you obeying Jesus Christ? Can I show you a verse that shows you're not obeying Jesus Christ by not giving an answer? I'll show you right here. It's in 1 Peter. So we turn to 1 Peter, who is an apostle. And we look at 1 Peter 3.15, and you know what he says? It says, In your hearts regard Christ's Lord as holy, ready at any time to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason to the hope that is in you. But you brothers did not give a defense. You didn't obey 1 Peter 3.15. God bless you.